What's up YouTube, back in the garage. Uh, if you missed any of the last videos, you would have saw me putting the LS into the RX-8 and then you would have also seen me uh, making motor mounts. That's how it sits. Currently the engine's holding itself up. Um, steering rack is also in place. So um, we're getting close. So obviously the next step to getting this thing where it needs to be is pulling the engine back out, attaching the transmission and making a transmission mount. So that's what we're gonna to do today. So, uh, like I said, I'm gonna pull this thing out, uh, attach the transmission and put the whole thing back in. Once I get the transmission in, I really it really opens up a lot because I can't make the exhaust until I have the transmission in. So I have a bunch of exhaust pipe um, ready to go. I'm gonna do a two and a half inch into a single three inch to the back. Um, so that should be good. Uh, but once I get the transmission in, I can start making that. I can also start making the transmission mount, which is another big deal. And then I can also get a measurement of the drive shaft. So I'm going to get some measurements once the transmission's in, and then I can order a custom drive shaft. Uh, there's all kinds of places you can order them. I'm going to just kind of pick the cheapest one that balances them up to about 6,000 RPMs, which is about, you know, what this thing will rev out to. So um, if you get one that isn't balanced that high, uh, they might be fine for just like a daily drive or whatever, but for something that could be used for performance, um, you know, you, you want it to be balanced out to high RPMs. Also in the last video, you saw me pick up these uh, Conse tandems. Um, like I said, these are going to run at least either until I put the wide body on or if I end up changing my mind and not going the wide body route, um, I can run these to start and they'll be, they'll be sick wheels and they'll look really good, I think. Um, not a huge fan of the bronze, but they'll get me started and I can always paint them if I need to. Um, I already picked up tires for them. Some nice Kumo summer tires that'll give me some good grip in the front um, whenever I drift this thing. All right guys, uh, engines back out. That was very easy. Um, just two bolts, one here, one here, and thing comes right out, just like you know any OEM motor mount. So those things are solid. Um, get a better look at them now that the engine's out. Gusted it on the outside there, and then also gusted it on the outside there, um, and that's what's given this this uh, weld here strength. So that's very nice. That was very easy. Very happy with that. Um, while the engine's out, I may I may shave a little bit of this off just because it was a little tight in there. Um, that way it slides in nice, nice and easy uh, when I put it back in. But anyways, engine's out. Uh, one thing I'm going to do that I didn't do last time, I'm going to take the whole harness off. Uh, in hindsight, that was kind of a mistake. I was trying to kind of cut in corners, which I shouldn't have. Uh, I'm going to take the harness off. That way I'm not, you know, no chance of ripping plugs out or anything. Transmission's back here. So I'll get some help to move that out once I'm ready. I'll have to go ahead and take the shifter off and plug up that hole so I don't get junk in there. The AR5 is about ready to get attached to the LS. Um, one thing, I'm not gonna put the clutch on just yet. I'm gonna leave that off because uh, I'm sure I'm gonna have to take the transmission back off. Maybe, maybe not, but either way, I'm gonna leave the clutch off just to make it easy. Um, yeah. Transmission is going to go back there. I'm going to go ahead and get that diff brace out of the way. Um, I don't I need to throw that away. The harness is completely off of it. It's going to make this thing way easier to handle. Um, I'm actually debating now whether I want to pull the intake off. All right, that's where I'm going to end the night. Got the intake ports all sealed off. So tomorrow, like I said, AR5 transmission will get mounted to the engine. And then uh, we'll drop her in. Start working on the mount.
All right, guys. Uh, transmission's on the engine. Uh, hoist is holding it up right now. Um, I got everything out from underneath the car, including the uh, power plant frame, which, again, I'll probably just throw that out. I may cut off the end where it mounts to the diff, um, just maybe so I don't have to start from scratch, or at least so I can keep it for whenever um, whenever I make my own measurements. Whenever I make my own uh, diff mount, I'll at least have this uh, end here to make my measurements off of or whatever. So yeah, transmission and engine are about to get dropped in. Everything's out of the way. I also went ahead and took the center console and the shifter out, the, uh, the big automatic shifter thing. Um, I think the AR5 shifter is gonna sit somewhere up here. So I'm gonna actually have to cut a hole out um, and make a linkage. But <clears throat> for now, I just took the shifter off. Um, so it should slide back in there. I should go ahead and take these tall bolts out. I'll do that. Um, I have my clutch lines here kind of just wrapped up. I can't, I kind of realized I couldn't take them out without taking apart my whole bell housing. So a um, little iffy, but I'll just try not to get those caught anywhere, kink them on anything. Um, you know, if I do, it's a very minimal thing. So. is in with the transmission and the motor mounts are all bolted up so everything still looks good in there time to see what it looks like underneath so we can see how far forward the shifter is um, and that's fine I expected that a lot of space plenty of space for an exhaust down here I'm very happy about that um yeah i can cannot complain about that so now the plan is to get this thing level um or at least in line with the diff that way i can start making them out for it all right guys i've been in process uh coming up with this transmission mount uh, that's the first thing i wanted to do so let me show you what I got here. I'm gonna have one cross brace across the frame rails and that's this piece, uh, some one eight thick, um, one and a quarter inch square tube. Um, I already went ahead and drilled holes on each end for a bolt and I put a little uh, sleeve here in the end so when I torque it down, it doesn't crush it. So that's what I've done so far and I've also opened up um, I've also opened up some holes here on the bottom of the frame rail. So what I'm gonna do, those holes in the frame rail are so that the nut can seat up inside of the frame rail. And what I'm gonna do is plate, I'm gonna plate this area here, right on the bottom. I'm gonna weld in a plate with a nut welded on the top. That'll sit right up in this hole. And I'll be able to bolt this cross member up right underneath it the whole way across and it looks like my measurements are good so that's what we're gonna do and then i'll have to add a spacer right in the center to actually mount to the transmission i've been kind of just plugging away so that's what i'm gonna keep doing all right guys so here's maybe a better visualization of uh, what i'm doing with my transmission mount so i have these plates cut out with a hole drilled in it um, and a bolt going up through my square stock here and what I'm going to do is I'm going to weld these plates to the bottom of the frame rail. And then I have a hole in the frame rail for this nut and stud or nut and bolt to sit up inside of the frame rail. So basically what I'm doing is strengthening the frame rail and then giving my myself a spot to bolt the square tube right to the bottom of the frame rail. So this, wet, this nut will get welded on to the, the plate here, which is what I'm going to do next. 
and uh, that's how it'll sit in the car. Crossbar is in, plates are tied up against the frame rail. I got the frame rails cleaned up. Um, so the nut is up inside of the frame rail along with the, the bolt threads. Um, so what I'm gonna do now, this is tight up against, I have the jack holding it tight. I'm gonna tack each side of these and then I'll drop the whole crossbar back down and uh, finish, finish welding both of them. And then this uh, square tube crossbar should just be able to bolt right up to those uh, plates and that'll be my base for my transmission mount. One thing whenever you're welding in tight spaces like this, don't forget to lay down some type of flame proof, uh, flame proof blanket um, because a lot of times whenever you're welding with your mask on in a tight space, uh, you might have spatter flying and you might not see something catch on fire. So you wanna take precautions. So I have this blanket laid down and then I have one more blanket that I might tuck up around here. The gas tank is towards the back of the car so I might just cover that up just in case. But yeah, I'm gonna go ahead and tack these up now. Those plates are officially welded in. Um, both sides, I need to clean them up and spray them. One thing I forgot to do, and I feel stupid now, um, I forgot to do a coating of primer on the top side of it, but in between the frame rail and the plate. Um, I kind of regret that, but also this thing's probably going to be in the garage most of its life. Um, so it kind of, it is what it is. Um, I don't think in my lifetime it'll rust out, but we'll see. I could be, uh, I could be wrong. Um, so now the next step here is to make a spacer here that basically uh, brings us up to the two mounting points. And I offset them a little bit. Um, because my plan is to bring, plans to bring a spacer straight up and then have, uh, maybe some angle iron come over and mount it to that. And then I'll just gusset that angle iron, uh, to give it some strength. That way I can put a bolt straight up through, uh, that flat, the flat piece of the angle iron. All right, guys, I got way ahead of myself. Um, I basically finished this transmission mount. So... Here's what I have. I have the cross brace, which I already showed. Um, plates are welded underneath the frame rails with nuts on them. So this can get bolted up through the frame rails. And then I have two just pieces of rectangular tubing as supports to so space up to the transmission along with the plate here. And the only thing that's left to do is drill my holes for the tram transmission mount. So, um, it's all welded up, wire wheeled it. Um, I'll shoot it with some paint once it's in and then make sure it all fits right. But there's my transmission mount. Um, probably a little bit over engineered because it's pretty beefy. <laughs> but uh, the LS is pretty beefy. So, And we got Nick here with the 350Z already probably about done with what he's doing because I haven't been filming. So what do you got, No, Nick? I mean, I'm putting on... Um... ISR upper control arms. Nice. They're adjustable camber. I think caster a little bit. Um, yeah, pretty much. That's about it. Nice. So there's more adjustment yes. for the drift alignment? Yeah. Heck yeah. Yeah, I mean, they're held about like three bolts. So. Nice. And then Nick also got steering wheel with a hub and everything. So Royal. Is that a good brand? I think it's like, an, Ener I think it's like an energy brand. Oh, okay. Nice. I, don't know. I mean, it seems pretty good. It's got the hub and the cook releaser energy, which is what I would have bought regardless. Yeah. And that's just kind of like the go to, I feel like. I mean, as far as steering wheels, energy is probably not the best, but it's better than like cheap eBay. So. Yeah, for sure. Sick. So, 350Z. What? That's next weekend, right? The dr next drift event? Yes. So, he's going to be sliding around next weekend again. Um,. I might uh, whip out the DSLR and, uh, and a zoom lens that we have and get some better footage this time. Uh, so stay tuned for that. So yeah, we're just going to keep plugging away.
All right, everybody, here's the final transmission mount. Um, two holes up there and that 3 16 flat stock. Um, yeah, that's basically it. Pretty simple. Should be plenty strong. And I have plenty of space here for two and a half inch exhaust and plenty of space here for two and a half inch to go through, right through there. So uh, that'll make it really easy. And right now it's sitting low, so I can always shim above that to bring it up. Two, three, four, five, six. You don't even see the back. Oh, there seven, it is. Eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14. Do you have to take the plenum off? Just hanging out in the garage. Just hanging out in the garage. Just Picking apart everything wrong at my car that I don't want to fix. I spend money on mods and not maintenance. <laughs> the driver's a loser. <laughs> That's how it goes. Yep. God has spent all day working on his car and still didn't replace his fan from the last event. <laughs> yeah, the most important thing I'm going to wait till the last minute to do and I'm not yeah. going to get my car to complete. <laughs> That's all right. All right, everybody, thanks for watching. Uh, the engine is officially in the car, in the RX-8, with the transmission, all mounted up, uh, no jack stands, no hoist. Um, it's it's solid, so uh, it's a good sight to see, um, good progress. So I'm just going to keep moving forward. Next steps uh, that you'll see in the next few videos, um, I'm going to get a drive shaft ordered. So now that transmission's where it needs to be, um, differentials where it needs to be. I can get a length for that. Um, and then also I can go ahead and start mocking up the exhaust, uh, which will be a big step and I have a lot of space for it. So that's good. Um, and then also the shifter linkage, um, I need to relocate backwards about eight inches maybe. So, uh, that'll be a big project. So those three things I can get going on now that we're this far. And then after all that, it's basically on to wiring and a few little odds and ends. And uh, we're getting really close. And probably a lot of other stuff that I missed. Coolant, everything. So um, anyways, stay tuned. And I'm um, looking forward to keep plugging away on this thing. So thanks for watching. See you guys later.